So tell me a little bit about it. There's really two types also from yeah. what I was reading, right? Yeah. What can you tell us about it? Let's say what intermittent fasting is. Okay. It's not starvation. Okay. People see the word fasting and they think that it's, they're not gonna eat for a long time. Right. It's intermittent, which means on and off fasting. So on and off eating. So basically you have two windows. You have a feeding window or an eating window. You will eat from this hour to this hour, all of your meals and snacks, and that's the only time you'll eat. Then you have what's called your fasting window. Okay. And this is why intermittent fasting works for a lot of things it works for. It works because your, your body needs energy all day while you're sleeping, while you're talking, taking a shower, whatever, having sex, you need energy, okay? okay. Your body typically will get the energy from the food that you eat, the calories. Okay. And your body stores calories in the form of glycogen, which is a glucose storage form, and fat. Okay. Fat is a storage form of energy. So when your body needs energy, it takes it from those calories you just ate or you ate a couple hours ago or it takes it from your stores. Okay. If you aren't taking in fresh calories, your body still needs energy. So it says, where am I gonna go to get this energy? Well, the first thing it does, it goes into your liver and your muscles and takes out the glycogen. So it depletes those stores, the inventory, it, it knocks them all out. Okay. Now where do you go? You go to your fat. Mm. The body breaks down the fat, mm. converts it to energy, and then you use it to do what you have to do. Now you don't know this is happening, by the way. This is happening obviously microscopically, yeah. internally, but this is, this is what fasting does. Fasting yeah. drives your body away from food energy into fat energy, melts the fat per se, and then you use it. Okay. So. Intermittent fasting has to work in the sense of you have to be very rigid about your times. All and right. this is what I mean. If you have a feeding window, you have to stick to it. If you extend your feeding window into your fasting window, you're gonna interrupt that fasting period. Okay. It's during that fasting period, during that period where you don't have energy, that your body's driving to your fat stores. Okay. Now, people say, well, what can I have during my fast? In, in my mm -hmm. way, you can only have about 25 to 50 calories of a beverage. So maybe coffee. If you wanna have some coffee or black some- Black coffee. Black coffee or yeah. some herbal tea. Okay. If the calorie count goes above about 50 calories, then you're gonna switch mm. from burning fat to go into the calories you're consuming. Wow. And we wanna keep the body, the switch, we wanna keep it into the fat direction. Okay. And that's why you don't what's called break the fast. Okay. So in my programs, and the last one, Clean and Lean, it's about clean eating, with intermittent fasting. Yep. So how would you do it? Let's say, for example, you wanna do a 12 hour fasting window. Okay. That means you're gonna eat for 12 hours and fast for 12 hours. First, by the way, 12 hours is a long time to eat. I mean, that's a, it's a lot of time, mm -hmm. you know. So- Do you this, believe it's a long time not to eat or a long time to eat? I think it's a long time to eat, okay. 12 hours. Okay, because right? you, you could be sleeping potentially eight of the other 12. See, now there you go, so okay. you, you got it already. Okay. So people say, but 12 hour fasting, guess what? Mm -hmm. If you slept for about eight hours, mm -hmm. That means just two hours before mm -hmm. and two hours afterward okay. that you're not eating. Okay. It's four hours really. Okay. Now, this is what you would do. This is what I think is the easiest way to do it. If you get up at, 10 at 8 o'clock in the morning, don't start eating till 10. Do everything you normally do from 8 to 10. At 10 o'clock, start your feeding window. Okay. From 10 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night could be your eating, feeding window, yes. your eating window. Yes. Okay. And then at 10 at night, you fast. Okay. Wrap around. That's a 12 12 window. Okay. You can burn a lot of fat. Okay. In that 12 hour fasting window. Do you, we're going to go to, we're going to go to lean in a minute. Yeah. The, the reason is this, what's unique about your book, one is the detailed explanation of why intermittent fasting works. But most of my friends who do intermittent fasting are like, it's great because once I'm in that feeding window, I can eat all the wow. crap I want to eat. <laughs> I love That's it. what most people say, I right? Know. Like they've, and I've had friends who have lost weight doing it that way but you've sort of combined clean eating with the fasting. This is really important, because people, people do say to me often, you must eat really clean. And I, I usually respond, yeah, but I'm not, really, <laughs> I'm not really sure that I know what clean, the clean part of that <laughs> means. So what is, and I, I wanna stay on the fasting, but I honestly am just curious about this, like what by definition is clean eating for you? Yes, clean eating means reducing the amount of processed foods or ingredients that you're consuming. It doesn't necessarily mean total elimination. Okay. It's a bit difficult to not eat anything processed for a long period of time, right? Yeah. You can go a couple days, but it's almost very difficult. But processed ingredients, things that have been processed by manufacturers that started like this and they add synthetic chemicals, preservatives, all these additives into the food and you see this on the shelf. Mm -hmm. This process here, this thing here is called processing the food. 
and then you see the finished product. Things like uh, you know chips or you know um, pop tarts, all these things mm. that do not look like how they came out of the ground or off the tree or walking around in the pasture, right? Okay. Now, to some degree, you're going to have to do some processing. But it's the addition of all these synthetic chemicals. And by the way, I wish we had like a, a package of something to look at. Mm. You turn the back of a label of, of a food yeah. a, a item, package item, and read what's in there. Okay. If it has more than five to seven ingredients, okay. it is highly unlikely that it's, it's a clean food. So I believe that the economics help drive why manufacturers put all this junk into food. Mm. Because it, the, the synthetic preservatives make the food more shelf stable. Yes. They can stay on the shelf longer yep. before they spoil. Yep. And therefore, a retailer can buy it and you can be on a Target shelf for six weeks, eight weeks mm. and be okay yep. to give you know, mm. uh, customers time to buy it and the, the retailer doesn't lose money. So yep. a big part of it is, is financial. The other part of it is that it's cheaper. Right. I mean, junk is cheaper. <laughs> like, right. It's junk. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, like, excuse the expression, but a junky car yeah. is not going to cost what it costs to buy a brand new Mercedes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so manufacturers are putting junk into foods because it's cheaper to put junk into foods rather than keep the food whole mm -hmm. and to farm it in a, in a whole way, mm -hmm. organic way. It doesn't have to be organic. It's all another conversation. But to farm it in a way where you're not putting all these pesticides and antibiotics and hormones in it, it's more difficult. When you're doing intermittent fasting, it cuts you right okay. it can cut you very well so you got to be careful for those who are not bodybuilders i say do your workout during your fasting time because th let's think about this right yeah. if fasting works because your body does not have calorie energy uh, calorie energy and your body needs energy we're going to go into the fat stores even harder yeah. Because we have nothing, yeah. no risk of the energy. Yeah. So working out during your fasting window is a great way to really cut. Awesome advice. Right? Yes. So, yeah. But if you are doing a two-hour workout, you're doing a huge hit workout, mm. don't do it then because you don't have enough energy okay. on board yep. to get through the workout. Yep. You okay. can hurt yourself. This is so good. So, and by the way, I'm a big fasted cardio person too, but I am going to go through this phase of, of uh, adjusting. I can very easily not eat the last two hours before I go to bed at night. That's not a challenge. It's, not a, it's cha not a challenge to wait a couple hours when I wake up. And me. that's why I say start that way. Yeah. People who are a little nervous, mm -hmm. this is what you do. And, and my programs on Instagram, so if you, if you follow me on Instagram, I do all these challenges, like a seven day soup challenge, three day weekend challenge. So if you follow me, I'll say to you, do not eat your last meal within two hours of going to sleep. Okay. Okay. Two hours. Okay. Because from the time, let's say you go to sleep at 10. Mm -hmm. After eight o'clock, we're not going to eat because all those calories you just put in for dinner, we need to give our body enough time to burn mm -hmm. as many of them sure. off before we lay down. Because yep. when you lay down, your, your metabolic rate drops to almost nothing, okay. relatively speaking. Yep. And so all those calories have to go somewhere. Okay. Where do excess calories go that you don't burn? Fat. They become fat. Right, right. So yeah. people, people are messing themselves up. Okay. They do pretty well during the day. Yep. They then blow they, it the last two hours. Or they yeah. eat a huge meal. Yeah. You know, okay. you like you eat like a 1500 calorie dinner. Okay. And then you're asleep an hour and a half. You got 1500 calories. Plus you're, you're also digesting that food, right? Absolutely. While you're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. A so your body what am I going to do with this stuff? Okay. Because Newton said, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Very good. It's got to go somewhere. So your body says, "Okay, we got it." We turn into fat. This is so good. All right, real quick, last thing. <laughs> okay. On that. Water okay. which you're about to drink. Yes. Perfect. Like I don't know how you knew I was going to do that. <laughs> how important is drinking water? in one's nutrition. I find, like a lot of people say, hey, I lost seven pounds the first week on whatever. I'm like, you dehydrated yourself. You lost five pounds of, <laughs> or six pounds of water, right? And one pound of fat. So, so how important, I just wanna make sure that people know they need to be hydrated and how you feel about that. So, uh, so this is a quick story. When I was in med school, um, I asked our, our kidney uh, professor, physiology. So he, this guy was an expert, he wrote the book. Uh, Heinz Valton. Okay. Uh, he wrote the book on how the kidney works. And I said to him, Dr. Valton, how many glasses of water are you really supposed to drink? Mm -hmm. He says, Smith, I'm going to tell you something. He said, um, the number eight glasses was made up. I was like, what? He's like, yes, that number was made up. We didn't know that it was really eight. Someone just said, you should drink eight <laughs> glasses of water a day. Really? Okay. Then they backed into the number. And okay. what they realized is the amount of water you should drink is the amount to replace your water loss during the day. Okay. The average person probably loses, but average, not someone who's 
training a lot, the average person probably loses between six to eight glasses worth, uh, cups worth, eight ounces uh, per cup okay. of water a day. Okay. So you gotta replace that. Your body is 70% water, okay. at least. And what people don't realize is just because you're not sweating doesn't mean you're not losing water. Right. Okay. You lose water when you're breathing, it comes to your skin, you don't realize it, you okay. obviously eliminate it, you know, you yes. urinate it. So you're losing water all day long, by the way. Okay. And so people are dehydrated and don't realize it. Okay. So I say the average person probably needs between six and eight, six and nine cups of water okay. a day. Okay. The more active you are, the more water you need. And by the way, here's a trick to lose weight with water. On all my programs, I say, um, wow. before eating a meal, you have to drink eight ounces of water before you take the first bite. Okay. Why is that? More full. That's right. Oh, it's brilliant. Your stomach works on expansion. So your stomach has, your stomach is like this, collapsed when there's nothing in it. And inside the wall of your stomach are stretch receptors. Okay. And those receptors send a signal to your brain when they get really stretched. So if you start, like my fists are closed here, if you start like this yeah. and you consume some water, you're like this. You have less room now for the stomach to expand with food because you've taken some up with water. Very good. So a quick tip is before Very every good. meal, right? Yes. Drink one cup of water. I love this. <laughs> Last thing I want to ask you about, just because mm -hmm. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. You got named uh, by President Obama. I want to give it the right name: Council of Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Yeah. Um, you've been you're the medical contributor on all these different shows. I've watched you on GMA. I've watched you on the Rachel Ray Show, which you're part of. You were on the Doctors. You've been everywhere. I gotta think though, that was one of the coolest things that's happened for you. And did you get a chance at all to interact and work with him? And if you did, what was that like? Yeah, so, you know, the White House is an amazing place, by the way. Is it? It just is. It's the people's I've been house. there on the tour, but yeah, I've been on the inside. part you went to. You know, I think that, I think that, because it's our house, we own it, all of us mm -hmm. own it. I think that we need to do a better job of giving people access, not just to the tour part. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how to do it. Maybe there's a lottery system, but some way people need to see the rooms where the work happens. Mm -hmm. When work's not happening, like the Oval Office sure. and going into the Roosevelt Room wow. and seeing like all the presidents and the pictures and the famous, it's just unbelievable. So to go into like the West Wing, you know, yeah. the West Wing, to actually go into the actual West Wing uh, is really something special. I'm sure. Um, I love our country. Uh, I love our history, mm -hmm. you know, the good and bad of it, mm -hmm. right? Because no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. We've had some bad moments in our sure history, have. but I love our country. And I, I told you before, I travel a lot. Yeah. And every time I go away, I was just in Japan, every time I go away and learn about other cultures and countries, it makes me love my country even more. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't like these new places, I sure. love them too, but, but it makes me appreciate America more. But going into the White House and, and working with the president, uh, Obama was just, he's just an awesome dude, man. Forget politics, like as a man, he was just a cool guy, mm. you know. He had a swagger about him, and sure. you know, we played ball. You did? Oh yeah, we played ball. I got this great picture uh, at my house where uh, he has his hand on my shoulder. The council is standing there, like talking to him, and Chris Paul, the basketball player, is standing next to me, and mm. the three of us are kind of in a moment. And I love that picture because it's very candid. Because you know, mm. they got these photographers that are always mm. going around, and it's just a great moment. But this council was an honor because I got a chance to sit down with my hero. Mm.